How's it going guys? It's time for my biannual super tank flex build. This time in the form of my mod 22 augment build, showing you all those nice green 90% stats you can flex to everyone you play with. My last one was a fan favorite guide, so I hope you guys like this one as well. Make sure to let me know by supporting the video if you do. This is also gonna be done without using the fortified nature enchant, so no free stats from there. And the usual disclaimer will be that this might not be the best performing build out there, but it'll definitely be something you can get a nice screenshot of to flex in all the discord chats you're in. No, but really, I hope you guys can see from showing Showing you how I went from my main build to the augment build, how easily you can switch things up and mix and match when you want to get more stats and more defensive or offensive ability on your tanks. So here we have my build from the last video, single target trial build for mod 22 with the active companion here and I'll show you how simple it is to switch over to the augment build. Boom, done. Switch these enchantments here from power over to combat advantage and you've got yourself 20,000 more offense stats and a bunch of extra HP from the Rat Pup Companion. Job done skis, there's your augment build. And this might seem like a meme, but honestly, you've got the two most effective offense stats and extra HP just from switching one thing. You've barely got to switch anything else either. Just those enchants or some insignias, a guild boon. Just take away a bit of the power for more CA, it's really that easy. This is a nice swap from an active companion when I'm already built with good defensive stats and I might just want some more threat or damage on my tank. It really could be that easy. But let's look at this from a big tank stats point of view, yeah? I went to the augment list and searched through for what I thought would be the best for tanks. There's a lot of options and obviously if you want to make use of the offense stats as well, you could use almost anything. But I'm focusing on as much defense stats as possible. The ones of note to me were the butterfly, fantastic with both defense and awareness. The cat would be great on a paladin or if you were really perfecting those 90s on a fighter or barbarian with the deflex severity. Also, the gorilla and the ironstone of might have HP, defense and deflect, which I love the idea of extra HP on these guys as well. And lastly, the black dragon ironstone with HP, defense and crit avoid. This is the one I would highly recommend for a fighter tank and it works perfect on my build as I'm actually capped on awareness rating but not defense. I'm currently using defense potions to make up that last bit of rating, so I can use no potions and switch out this mount bonus for crit avoid instead to perfectly balance the extra augment stats. This is looking really nice now with that extra crit avoid and HP, so let's lean into the defensive stats and look at how much more we can go with. Now that I've freed up those potions, let's use the deflect potion instead of the defense. And if we swap out this ring here for the living silver leaves ring for the free 5% awareness for single target fights, which is great for trials by the way, that frees up my awareness elixir for the Fohammer's favor elixir for more deflect and deflect severity. And then we'll just slap on the main of the manticore to still get those juicy manticore bites when we use our dailies. Now let's say we try and get that crit avoid to max by swapping out our wispy boots for the slips of the rain for the 10% crit avoid bonus under the same conditions when you're hit by a crit and also taking off armor break for anticipation for that 7.5% crit avoid. Obviously I would never actually recommend this as even using something like weapon break would give you the same bonus but to the whole team. An armor break is far ahead of the others if no one is running it. But who cares right? We're in this for the fatty green 90%. Slap them on and this is what you've made for yourself. Look at those numbers. I know they only came up for a second, but it's hard to snapshot the stats that would stay up on dummies since once you stop hitting, you're out of combat for stuff like the awareness ring. So that goes to show some easy swaps you can do there for a beefy augment build with max defense, awareness, and crit avoid, which is more than enough stats for a tank in Neverwinter. And really, it doesn't stop there. There's even more stuff you can do on here for huge stats on your character, as well as some hidden stats that can really buff up your character in the background. Let's have a look at the rest of it. Now, most of our stats are pretty balanced right now, especially when you take into account the potions and the temporary procs. The important stuff at least, but there's more utility stuff we can get rid of for bigger stats like HP. Let's start by taking off my apocalypse set for the new item level stuff, the Northern Jewel set. This is gonna give me a lot more item level as well as plus nine constitution, which is gonna really get my HP up there. You could put another artifact here, but just in case the bonus does work, I'll leave it on. Check out my video on the artifacts to hear more about these things. This also frees up my encounter slot for either Iron Warrior or Knight's Valor, which of course are big personal bonuses. Same with Earthshaker that can now switch over to Bladed Rampart for the reflected damage or Phalanx for a big team damage resistance buff. 
I actually forgot how much stats Blade of Rampart gives. If you want a really, really easy stat screenshot for all five 90s for the memes, then look into using this. While we're taking away our buffs, you could take out the Mastercraft for something like the Lionheart weapons for that selfish damage resistance and damage bonus. Oh, I also forgot the overloads before when I did my 90s test on the dummies, so I'll throw those on. The Bulwark for the HP, and although I would say to use the damage reduction one in the second slot, you can put in the unholy protection because we're just looking for the stats here for the flex, right? That's 10% extra stats we can get in deflect and crit avoid. So I can take off the slips of the rain boots with the crit avoid on them and put the shadow demon wisp back on for the HP since I would have wasted crit avoid at this point. Then if you just want even more numbers, you can swap out the lich companion for something with deflect, crit avoid. I'm actually putting on one with awareness here to overcap my awareness. Since without a full group, I can't show off all my 90%, you know? So this could be even higher in a full group. This awareness chest piece still holding me back from showing off my numbers. And once you've done all that, you can pop your rotation on a dummy and you're looking at this. Look at that HP with those crispy defensive stats. And all this, of course, without the fortified nature enchant or cheating with the daily stats. All of this stuff has very good uptime. None of the stats are like super temporary. Obviously there is procs in here, so there will be downtime, but it's almost all good, reliable bonuses. And this isn't even the end of it, honestly. I could mention so many other things I haven't done, like the mount. Well, actually, the mount bonus is pretty good for a defensive one, honestly. The swarm is such a good tank mount, but, I mean, the artifact, you could use something like the Forge Hammer for that 20% reduced damage. This thing used to be 50% before people in Tom were using it to ignore mechanics like the Fireball on DPS or healers. My race as well, I could switch to a Dwarf or an Asimar for the beefy tank stats, the defense and the HP. And honestly, if I went Dwarf, I could drop these arms that I don't like using since they could fix them any day now and get back on the midnight grips or even these new ones with the deflex severity. There's some seal pants as well with recharge speed that I quite like the look of, as well as a shirt with combat advantage if I wanted to get my shirt and pants up to date. And last but not least, don't forget my full page of power insignias that could all be defensive stats. That's 15 insignias that could have deflect or HP on or something else to easily cap those stats easily. Hopefully you guys can really see how much of an easy switch or a big task it can be between my personal build to an augment build and then to a super tank build. I think the ideal place for the builds to go in this game would be somewhere in the middle where there's content where we really need to have those max stats and item level up first and then we can strip back the defensive bonuses for those damage buffs and team utility to make the dungeon and trial runs even more efficient. For now I think a tank's job really should be to help out the group with those utility bonuses but I know that doesn't work for every group and every player. So if you're struggling with really surviving, hopefully this build or guide helps to show you all the places you can build your defensive stats and bonuses. And for some, I hope it helps you get those spicy screenshots of your stats that you can show your dad so he can finally be proud of you. Stay safe guys and thanks for watching.